the eighth row, Brett Bodine and Tom Kendall driving for Rick Hendry. And boy, we'll see a scramble down to head into turn one. Look there, they're trying to go three wide. That's Kendall in the black car, the Rick Hendrick machine, taking second. And I thought maybe he's going to make a bid for the lead, but he did not. Tom Kendall runs in second behind Michael Waltrip. Now, Kendall got position on Michael going down in turn one. Michael tried to race him, but how poor Michael was, just no way in the world. The leader is now Tom Kendall in car number 18, but he has got Rusty Wallace breathing down his exhaust pipe as they head down the main straightaway. Rusty is going to pull out and attempt to go into the lead. He's going to do it rather easily. Into turn one, Rusty Wallace is the leader. Ooh, Kendall has spun and hit the wall. Oh, hell, it looks like it's ready to left rear tire as it came off of that turn, and it just spins him around. And there is the shredded tire that caused the problems for Kendall. Yes, now the caution flag does come out. Harold Kinder is waving the caution flag now. The checkered flag and the red flag wave simultaneously, giving the win to Tommy Kendall and the Manufacturer's Points Championship to Chevrolet pretty obvious that this year if you didn't have a, a red bow tie you weren't dressed for the occasion this was uh, a really super year for the ICI Olivetti Beretta team you know we just they couldn't be beat six foot five inch California college student and four-time IMSA champion Tommy Kendall has a six liter Chevrolet on the pole and as they swap again it is now Kendall that finds himself in front here in Talladega just behind him is Big Al then Scott Pruitt Elliott and Rusty Wallace battle it out. Here comes Mark Martin on the inside, getting some help from Jeff Bravo. Ernie Irvin uncoupled his car and caught Kyle Petty in the left rear, and Mark Martin in the right, sending the Bulgers forward flying, setting off a chain reaction that won't soon be forgotten. Most of the 19 cars torn up were taken to the garage area, which within minutes looked like a million dollar junkyard. The race was red flagged for 33 minutes. Patty Petty, wife of Kyle, watched as her husband was flown with a broken leg to a nearby hospital. Sports coverage presents Speed World. Today, from the wine country of the Sonoma Valley of Northern California, one of the most fertile valleys in all of the United States. Also there, you'll find Sears Point International Raceway and today's Banquet Frozen Foods 300 Winston Cup race. Kyle Petty, as we had told you earlier, broken his leg in that accident in Talladega. Now, he is going through the long, sometimes painful, very difficult process of rehabilitation, so he will not be in the car today. Instead, road racer Tommy Kendall, a specialist, and Kyle, I heard you said the other day that uh, it was pretty good to have someone like Tommy in the car. Might even be better uh, for Felix, your car owner, than if he had you in there. Oh, it's definitely going to be better for Felix and the crew and Melly Yellow and Pontiac and everybody. You know, Tommy's an exceptional road racer. He came out here and he qualified fifth. I might not have made the race the way I get around road courses sometimes, so we're going to be out there pulling for him. On the pole from Chesapeake, Virginia, in the number five tied Chevrolet is Ricky Rudd, qualifying at 90.634. On the outside of the front row, his best start this year, Terry Labonte in the number 94 Sunoco Ultra Oldsmobile. He's from Corpus Christi, Texas. Going to row number two, it's Dale Earnhardt, the current points leader in the number three GM Goodwin Chevrolet. And then Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac, car number two. In the third row, it is Tom Kendall in the number 42 Mellow Yellow Pontiac. And here is another innovation that we actually started last year at Watkins Glen in our support race. This won an Emmy Award for ESPN Speed World coverage, the telemetry there on the right of your screen. It will show you the miles per hour up there. You can see it 40, 41, the RPM of the car, 51, 11 now. You will see when uh, the driver is on the brake, that will flash on and on for you. Uh, by the way, this is in Tom Kendall's car. It will also show you how he's on the accelerator. As you can see right now, he is in second gear. So all of that information will be available to you as you watch Tom Kendall go around this two and a half mile road course. 
Ricky Rudd on the pole in the tied Chevrolet. Terry Labonte is alongside. The cars come off of the 11th corner and they get the green flag. The banquet, Frozen Foods 300 underway. Once again, he uses the same pattern every time. There's smoke going into turn four or five over there around Benny Parsons area. And the car off course. R.K. Smith has gotten that car way up on the banking. You can see steam and smoke pouring from that car. The yellow flag is out. We are going to have our first full course caution of the afternoon. Oh, a battle for second position, Ned. Well, trying it again on the outside. He tried to outbreak Earnhardt coming into the turn, but again, Earnhardt has the preferred groove going into the turn. He'll slip Wallace up a little high, but it gives him enough room that Wallace makes the pass. Here's the telemetry. Now watch the speed decrease as he heads for that second gear corner. All the way down to the 40s. 30, 33, 33, 30. 30th miles an hour, about the slowest, and then back hard on the accelerator. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there thinking, well, heck, if they're only going 30 miles an hour, I could do that. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a little harder than it looks. Yeah, it's the 120 or 25 or 30 miles an hour that you uh, go on the other portions of the course that would worry me. And Tommy's going to take it to the inside in turn number 11, and he is going to pass Terry Labonte. Bob, that was a classic road racing move out, breaking the belt, going down in the slow corner. And Kendall, with his road racing experience, will probably won't see much more of that today. Well, the Trans Am champion, of course, has a lot of experience on road courses, and that's one of the reasons why he was chosen to replace Kyle Petty on this particular venue. Tom Kendall with a great future in racing. He's a youngster, just graduated from UCLA recently, but he has a bright future in auto racing if he wants to stay with it. I asked him what his degree was from at UCLA. He said, economics. I said, what do you do with that? He said, figure out how to spend my money. <laughs> and Derek Cope has crashed. He's taken that uh, Chevrolet into the tire barrier, and it is going to bring out a full course caution. And here comes Earnhardt and Kendall watching from Tom Kendall's in-car camera. You see, there's a lot of steering wheel movement on this race track. That's Bob. exactly what I was thinking, Ned, how busy Kendall is. He's probably never been this busy in a race car in his life. They go downhill now. Here's turn number six and on to the straightaway. There's the foot cam. You can see him hard on the accelerator now, hard onto the brake, trying to take over the position at turn seven. Yeah, he's trying to go on the outside of Dale Earnhardt. We've seen that pass made a couple of times, but Tommy Kendall couldn't make it that time. Tommy Kendall said, hey, I saw those guys do that before. I thought it didn't work for me. The foot cam once again. Notice he's not using the clutch, just breaking with his left foot. They're breaking with the left foot, shifting gears all this while never touching the clutch. The Jericho transmissions will allow them to do that. There he's, we saw when the right foot goes, that's shifting gears. Now watch him, he's going to slow down here. It was about 30 miles an hour. Only got down to 31 that time for turn number 11. And he'll be hard on the accelerator now for a while here until he gets up to turn number one where he might touch the brakes slightly. Up through the gears into second, now into third. Moses right in on Earnhardt up at the top of the hill in turn two. Boy, he sure is. It looks like he wants that position real bad. Now, I think Earnhardt's holding him up a little bit and just get an opportunity to move around. He'll try him again, I'll bet, on the outside going into turn seven. Now he breaks a little bit harder going into the turn. Earnhardt gives him room down there, but did he get in too fast? Kendall almost got into the turn too fast, but he might have made the pass this time, fellas. Yes, he did. How about that? Tom Kendall with a very nice move in turn number seven and now takes over the position from Dale Earnhardt as they swing through the S's. It's gotten worse. After he made that pit stop, we didn't see any smoke for a couple of laps, but now he is really putting it out there. Yeah. Well, 
our third full course caution of the afternoon waves over Sears Point International Raceway with Rusty Wallace leading the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. Earnhardt is in for an unscheduled stop. What they're going to do is go under the hood. Richard Childers says he hopes it's nothing more than just a loose oil fitting. The field gets set, set to go back to green flag conditions. Here they come off the final corner. Oh, and a spin right here at the straightaway. Ernie Irvin loops. He's going to be able to keep going. To this turn, Tommy Campbell now begins to move up put a little bit of pressure on him up. There are a lot of people that sincerely believe that Tom Kendall can win this race here this afternoon. We have talked about how good he is on road courses and his performance that he has uh, seen in Winston Cup competition on road courses. And with this car underneath him, he is a real contender for a win. Just came in there a little hard. He's coming up in our direction, but he's not going to quite get here. <laughs> Let's hope not. So Tommy Kendall's fellow yellow Pontiac has only completed 21 laps at the previous pit stop. Well, Bob, Bob Gary Nelson brought Tommy Kendall in about five laps early, knowing that everyone has to make at least one more stop. Now, he realizes that Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace should be pitting any time now. But if they calculate their pit stops according to how much fuel they'll have, they'll have to make their final stop with about five laps to go. Now, far in caution flags, of course, they'll have to come back in. We're talking about Wallace, Rudd, etc., with five laps to go. They will make their stop, meaning Gary Nelson and Tommy Kendall, with about ten laps to go, meaning they'll be back up front. It'll be up to Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd to catch them for the win. Well, we're up here with Gary Nelson. There's been some concern that maybe your car was sputtering a little bit. You lost the spot a minute ago to uh, Mark Martin. Well, the, the car sputters after about 20 laps, uh, and where the other teams can go about 30. So uh, we get split up. It's just a fuel pickup problem that we're having in the left-hand turn. So we just split up uh, from the last caution turn in 20 laps, and then it's 20 laps to the finish. So, uh, Rusty looks like he can make it all the way, and maybe the sixth car or the five. I'm not, we can't make it all the way, uh, caution would sure help, but uh, as far as us, uh, Tommy's doing a great job and we're really happy that he's going up front as far as he is. Tom Kendall is in for a pit stop. Jerry. Actually a little bit earlier than they would expect, but Kendall has come down pit road nevertheless, Bob, and they will change all four tires and fill it up with fuel. He had to make one more stop anyway, and I guess they're going to try to get him the best chance they can to get back up front. Otherwise, he would have made that final stop with a few laps to go. Kendall's car is down and away at the complete pit service. I think that's a smart move of bringing him in a little bit earlier. Of course, I noticed the last couple of laps around coming off of turn seven. We mentioned earlier that the car was sputtering coming off of here, and it was a little bit worse the last two or three times. But now he is back out there, has all the service he needs for the balance of the race, and should they get a caution, he's going to be in super shape, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. So uh, I think that was a good strategy. He comes out in ninth position. Here is a spin by Mike Chase. Now the question is, is this going to bring out a caution? Another car the caution, stops. The caution is coming out because Morgan Shepard is stopped up in turn two. Yeah. There we're seeing Mike Chase. We're looking at Mike Chase, but Morgan Shepard has stopped up in turn two with a blown engine. Shepard's right there on the left. And there oh, that is... Was a, oh, was, was tremendous that break for Tommy Kendall. That's the break that he needed. Now everybody else will come in. He'll stay out on the track, and they'll be behind him. And there wow. is the caution flag. The full course caution. Fourth yellow of the afternoon. And yes, indeed, this is a good break for Tommy Kendall. The green flag comes out. We're back to racing. On lap number 61, Kendall has the lead. And there's about six or seven cars, four cars between he and Rusty Wallace. Rusty trying to get to him up in turn two. Yeah, there's Rusty moving the inside of Dave Marcus. Now Bobby Hamilton. He's knocking him off as he's now got his set sight set on the leader of the race, Tom Kendall. Oh, Richard Petty. Oh, Richard hard into the wall up here in turn one, Bob. Richard Petty has gone into the tires, and oh, he has hit hard. Look at the damage on the front end of that car. Hey, Richard, you okay? Richard is moving around in the car. Good. 
A lot of concern here in the Rusty Wallace pit. Rusty's ready in a minute ago said he has a problem. And behind me, Harold Elliott and Jimmy Maycar and the crew are watching actually trying to make a decision. Now what they're trying to decide is should they bring Rusty in? Apparently the car is sputtering or missing even more now. They think they may have a plug wire off or possibly it may be something in the valve train. They're not really sure what it is. Now what they're trying to do is figure out if there are 18 cars in the lead lap according to their calculations. Now with eight laps to go, do they risk coming and pitting it and see if they, maybe it is a plug wire and they can fix it? Then they get back out and get just a few left to pass 18 cars, which they'd never be able to do. Maybe still finish eighth or ninth. Or they stay out there and ride it out and hope that it won't get too bad and maybe he can run quick enough to finish. Lap number 68, and we are back to green. Now we'll see how this thing shakes out. It's set up to be what could be a very exciting finish as Tom Kendall still has the lead. Remember, we heard that Rusty Wallace may be having a problem on that car, and several are pursuing him, including Mark Martin, Davey Allison, and Ricky Rudd. Kendall has a good lead coming into turn seven. Here goes Mark Martin around Rusty Wallace, taking over the second position. Davey Allison now trying to pull up on the outside of Rusty Wallace, so definitely he is having a problem. Tom Kendall, of course, looking for his very first Winston Cup win here this afternoon. We asked him earlier in the weekend, do you feel confident you can win today? I really do. You know, racing is racing, and uh, you never know what's going to happen. But aside from punctures and incidents that happen on the track, you know, all, if none of those uh, come up and bite us, I think we've got a really good shot. We we're doing some uh, longer runs this morning, and I think after about 10 laps, we're going to be in really, really good shape. Uh, we were running, I think, about as quick as anybody, or maybe quicker, after about eight or ten laps on the tires. Words earlier in the weekend from Tom Kendall, but look at Mark Martin close the gap. Martin is closing in quickly, guys. No question about it. He has uh, gained almost a second in the last lap, Bob, and he's certainly within striking distance now. And Not too far behind in third position is Davey Allison, and fourth is Ricky Rudd. If Davey can dodge a wreck, he might be in good shape. I tell you, he's going to get all the pressure he can stand. Here's Martin now. Yep. Going to try it on the outside. This is the pass we've seen several times. They touch a little bit coming into the turn. Martin drives her in deep and locks the brakes. That won't get it. Well, here he comes. Back him on the outside. He might be able to do it. Oh. Look again. Martin spins around and slams into the guardrail on the inside. Wow. Mark Martin has spun, is going to be able to pull away, however. He's going to put one of those tires in the middle of the racetrack. And Bobby Hillen hit it. A lot of action has been seen in turn number seven. Ned, where you are. Okay, here's the replay. Martin coming in on the outside. He touched us a little bit before they got to the turn. Then Martin went wide, locked the right front brake. I thought that would have had done away with his situation of being able to pass. Yes. But then he got out there and Kendall put the bumper to him. And Davey Allison, meanwhile, has passed Kendall. And here comes Ricky Rudd to do likewise. Yes, Davey Allison coming off turn two got underneath the car of Tom Kendall. It's almost like the Kendall car has a tire going down because the handle has just gone away on the Kendall car. It could very well be, Benny, because he and Mark Martin had pretty heavy contact there. And it was the left front of Kendall's car that was up against the right rear of Mark Martin's car. So he could very well have cut a tire. And out of nowhere comes Davey Allison to lead this race. And Kendall can't get the car to turn, almost ran in the bank. Yeah, he's struggling with that car, and it's a really tough break for Tom Kendall, but he has definitely proven himself as a great race driver for the future in Winston Cup racing. In the run is there. 11, oh, and Davey Allison is spun. Ricky Rudd now has the lead. All kinds of contact here in the last few laps. And the white flag flies for Ricky Rudd. And Ricky Rudd is apparently going to receive the checkered flag and the win of the Banquet Frozen Foods 300. Here he comes, waving to the pit crew as he passes by. The black flag is shown to Ricky Rudd. Rudd is shown the black flag. Davey Allison is shown the checkered flag. They did not give the win to Ricky Rudd. Though. No, they gave the black flag to Ricky Rudd as he came down and passed under the start-finish line. They waved the checkered flag to Davey Allison, and he apparently is going to win this race. Well, why don't somebody jump up and down, guys? <laughs> They're confused. That's what Red Bull.
what that crew is. They don't know exactly what is going on. Wow! Wow is right! I'll tell you, we just went out there and we drove our guts out today. And, you know, it's a shame what happened right there on the next to last lap down here in turn 11, but it was the justification came out in the end. And we're tickled to death to be here in Victory Lane for a second time this season. We're going to get some more. Hard work for the type of finish you had today, but you're still able to smile. Uh, you and Mark are parked next to each other here in the garage area. Have you had words yet? Well, Steve Meal came over right afterwards and said, hey, you know, that's race and don't feel bad about it. But, uh, you know, we got together going into the corner. Mark got into me a little bit and I got a little loose. And then coming off, I was just picking up the throttle and got loose, tagged his uh, left rear and he got around and that's what uh, bent my fender in on the tire. So uh, I don't think the finish was real indicative of how we were running. I think Ricky and I probably ended up 18th and 19th, but uh, that's why they call it racing. Well, you also had a really great run here. I know you're looking forward to going out to New York and uh, driving Kyle's car there. Yeah, you know, we were taking one race at a time. You know, I'm really thankful to Felix Sabatis and the whole Sabco team for putting me in the mellow yellow car. And, uh, you know, we wanted to get a win or a top five finish here. Didn't happen. We've at least got another one to look forward to. It's not next week like all the rest of these guys, but we've got one in August. Right after Tommy climbed out of the car, Gary said, what are we going to do at Watkins Glen? Tommy said, hey, we're going to lap the field. <laughs> Back to you, Bob. Back live at Watkins Glen, we've had another big crash in the Turn 5 area. It's one of the Chevrolet-powered Intrepid cars, either Tommy Kendall or Wayne Taylor. It's the 65 car, and that is Kendall. Let's take another look. Trailing Jeff Brabham's Nissan into the corner. And the car just comes around. One of the rear wheel spats. Come, the yeah, rear wheel like, came off. Rear wheel came right off the car, and this is a hard hit. Oh, Good grief, that was a horribly hard hit. There being a Formula One style gravel trap there, the car may not have even reached the guardrail at all, but it certainly would have slowed down a lot. And Tommy Kendall has right. raised his hand to the crowd. He is smiling on that stretcher. I can't believe it. Kendall was wheeling a special Chevrolet car when it crashed badly at the end of the long straightaway and he suffered severe injuries to these lower extremities. But Kendall is looking forward to the road to recovery. I mean, I definitely have a lot of things that I want to accomplish yet racing, you know. Something like this makes you think a little bit. You realize how vulnerable you are, and, uh, you know, it scares you, certainly. But, um, you know, racing's been a part of me for a long time, and that's all I've ever thought about for the last six, seven years, and how to improve and how to, you know, get to that next level, et cetera. And so I don't think there's any question that I'll get back in a car um, as soon as I can, or as soon as I feel I'm ready.